together again on the radio. Oh, sex, sex, sex. We talk about sex all the time on this show. All the time. And yet over the years, it's been obvious to me that many of you who tune in and hear me talking about sex aren't getting much, if any. You know, some of you just uh, don't know how to get it, or in the worst-case scenarios. Some of you married or moved in with the wrong person, and that person refuses to put out. So, if you're a chick, and you're with a guy who doesn't put out, you immerse yourself in your friends, you immerse yourself in chick flicks, or Grey's Anatomy, you watch TV shows and movies about other people who are having sex, who are not you. And uh, if you're a guy, who moved in with or married the wrong person, you go to Hooters, oh yeah, just to watch the game, honey. I'm just going to Hooters to watch the game, have some wings and a beer. That's it. Right. Nothing like going to Hooters and seeing the primary target audience. Ever done this? Rather than going to Hooters to look at Hooters, try this sometime. I've done it. In fact, I've done it at the Hooters on Hollywood Boulevard. Not far from my home. There's a Hooters right across the street from uh, Grauman's Chinese Theater. And I have been in there on a Saturday afternoon looking around. <laughs> Unbelievable. You see the poor guys in there. They all have that same look. Doesn't matter what part of the country you go to Hooters. They all have that same hangdog look. As they stare vacantly at ESPN and Fox Sports Net. As they stare at the NFL or the NBA or Major League Baseball or college basketball or whatever they're looking at. You can tell these guys stopped thinking about sex a long time ago. And about as close as they get is looking at that chick in the tight orange t-shirt. That's as close as a lot of them get. Jesus. Absolutely pathetic. By the way, you see that same look in strip clubs. Oh, you definitely do. Take a look around. You, uh, you take a look around at a strip club and you see these guys with that vacant look. You know the look I'm talking about? It's not unlike if you've ever been to a casino in Vegas or Atlantic City. And you see somebody sitting in front of the uh, slot machine. And they, uh, they've got a bucket full of quarters. And they're just pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling that handle. Losing over and over and over. And they don't even look like they're having fun. You know, the gambling industry likes to refer to itself as gaming. And you see some of these guys who are out there just pulling the, pulling the handle. Or the older, slovenly fat chicks in the flower print stretch pants where they're pulling that handle over and over and they've got that vacant look. That's what I see in strip clubs. That's what I see at Hooters. I see people who just look beaten down. Beaten down. Well, let's face it, if they were getting sex from somebody who looked hot when they take their clothes off, they wouldn't be in places like that. They would be home. They would be at home. Getting it. It's that simple. They would be at home getting laid. So you see these boys at the bowling alley, Hooters, the strip club. You see them out there. Just, just looking down, just looking bored, 
beating dogs is the best expression I can think of. And a, a lot of this comes from getting into a relationship with somebody. And then there is really no heat there. The minute the two of you uh, get into the everyday humdrum of having to pick up the dry cleaning and having to go to the uh, supermarket and having to pick up the kids at soccer practice or whatever it is, there is no sex anymore. There is no sexuality anymore. There's nothing hot about that. Nothing. Nothing. And so people find their little outlets. Women with romance novels. For women who wish they were getting something really hot. And they're not. That's why women in relationships that are dead, where the guy just uh, shows no interest in sex anymore, they say, honey, why don't we go to the movies? Because in reality, your girl wants you to go out to a movie where she can get all aroused. Looking at some hot movie star. Because she's not feeling it at home. I don't care if you're a man or a woman. I know I'm telling the story of somebody's life. Is it yours? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. That sounds like you got the best job of them all. You betcha, baby. The Tom Likas Show. Show from Hollywood at one eight hundred five eight hundred top. Thank you for tuning in. I want to talk to the people who aren't getting any. I mean, the ones who are in relationships. You are married. You are living together. And then there's nothing happening in the sack at home. So there you are. Just kind of sitting there like a beaten dog. Is that you? Call me right now at 1-800-5800-866. This is Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. Chris. Yes. I uh, was just listening to you. I listened to you online, and uh, I listen to the podcast sometimes because I grew up in California, listened to you a lot, and I'm in the Navy now. The Navy sent me out to Norfolk, Virginia, where we can't pick you up. I understand. And uh, I was listening, and I just wanted to say, you were totally describing my marriage. You know, my wife was always trying to get us to go out to the movies and do, you know, this and that type of thing. And, you know, I'm going through a divorce right now. And whose idea was that? Uh, Hers. I'm not going to lie to you, it was hers. And what reason did she give you? That uh, things just weren't working out. And I didn't, you know, I kind of had wanted to end things previously. You know, I just started listening to you again recently. And, uh, you know, I was too much of a pussy to try and say anything about it and try to end things. So you wanted it to end, and therefore you stopped having sex with her? Pretty much. And why, kind of why did you... That she had been cheating, and so I just didn't want to go there. You suspected that she was cheating? Did you ask her about it? Oh, of course, but do you really think she's going to be honest about that? Not, again, there's ways to find out, you know, there's ways to investigate. Well, right, but I mean, I don't really have the money to hire a private investigator. I mean, I had found uh, chat logs on her computer having sexy conversations with guys and stuff like that. Well, that's really all you need. Yeah, I know. So why did you let yourself be a sitting duck? Why didn't you get out first? Well, I don't know, Tom. I guess because I'm a pussy. Uh, things were good. Didn't want to uh, upset the status quo. You know, I um, like to have a place to come home to. I didn't want to have to go live on the ship. Like, like I said, I'm in the Navy, so I wanted <laughs> to have somewhere to come home to. Why couldn't you just have your own place uh, off the ship? Why do you have to have a wife? Well, I can. I mean, uh, just make things more difficult. How? You know, I don't uh, wanted someone to take care of the house and pay the bills and so forth while I'm while I'm out to sea. Don't you understand? It would be cheaper to hire a housekeeper. 
<laughs> than to have a wife. Oh, right, Tom. All you guys who cheap out on that stuff. Well, I'll get married because I want someone to take care of the house. I have a housekeeper. I pay her $150 a week. That's probably a lot less than I was paying my wife. That's my point. <laughs> uh, you, want to, you want your bills paid? Why don't you have your accountant do it? Hire an accountant. Yeah, I don't have an accountant. Get one. It's still cheaper than a wife. Yeah, you're right. I don't understand you guys who do this. I mean, I'm hire help. I mean, let me tell you something. I live alone. You know what I do? If I'm having a party, I hire a party planner. If I am having a, uh, a dinner, I will sometimes bring in help in the kitchen. If I need help uh, cleaning the house, I have a housekeeper. If I need help gardening, once a month I have a gardener come over. And all of that is still cheaper than any woman I've ever been with. <laughs> uh, you're right, Tom. Hey, uh, will you take me out, Freddie Wilhite style? Oh, so tasteless. <laughs> yes, sir. I shot my wife in the stomach for 38. Why did you do this? She enticed me and she ridiculed me throughout my lifetime. I say she's alive. She's alive? She's dead. I think she's dead. <laughs> I laugh every time I hear that. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. There you are. You are married. You're living with someone. You're not getting any. Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you doing today? You don't really care. You're just killing time. Right? Hello? Hello? All right, Junior, you need a new cell phone. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom Meredith. Hello. Okay, this is Sean. Hello, Sean. This is Adele. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi, Tom. Hi. How are you? Great. Good. Um, yeah, I was listening to what you were saying, and I have a problem. See, my boyfriend, like, at first when we got together, like, we had a lot of sex. But then I started, like, backing out. Like, I didn't want to. But then, like, now, like, I want to have it, like, all the time, in the morning, in the night, whenever. Is that because whenever. is that because you want to have a baby or something? I mean, why you, why all I, of a sudden? I don't know. I don't want no. Why all of a sudden are you interested? I have no clue. I don't know. Maybe my chemistry or it's something, but, like. I'm just like feeding for it. And, I, I want to tell you I'm something. When, when I have been, huh? in, I want to tell you something. When I've been in a relationship with a woman, mm -hmm. and she starts giving me those excuses, mm -hmm. that's when I start checking mentally, checking out of the relationship. I start losing interest. Really? Yes. Now, my last long relationship. This is absolutely true. Okay. Okay. Um, you know what TiVo is? No. TiVo is like a VCR. Uh huh. Except it's digital. Uh -huh. So when you're watching something on TV, it's like watching something on your VCR, mm -hmm. something you recorded, okay? Mm -hmm. You can press stop at any time, and you can watch any time you want, mm -hmm. okay? Uh -huh. So my ex-girlfriend was watching a TV show on HBO called Mind of the Married Man, which uh, was recorded on TV. Uh -huh. And I tried to get my hands on her, and uh, I'd go for it. Uh -huh. And she said, can't we wait until this is over? <laughs> okay, well, you know what that's you know, like. You know what that did to my interest level in her, not just that night, but after that? What? It, it, it pushed it down to about zero. And then there was another time when I gave it a shot, get this. Uh-huh. I tried to touch her. Uh-huh. And she told me, don't touch my hair. Huh. I don't want to mess it up. Well, I don't think your situation's the same as mine. Because I'm dead, dear. It doesn't, dear. It doesn't matter what the reasons are. Uh huh. It doesn't matter what the reasons are. Those are the reasons I was given. But the minute a woman starts saying no, 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 I start saying uh, out, out, out. 
Well, I don't want out of the relationship. No, you don't. No, no, dear. He's really good, but you, you're not hearing like, what I'm saying. And I don't think he. You're wants not understanding to be out of this relationship. me, dear. You're not understanding me. Okay, go ahead. When you started turning him down, mm-hmm. he started to lose interest. Okay, I'll agree with you on that because we we broke up and we were separated for a while, but then we got back together, and it's like. His sex drive is, like, really high, but mine right now is higher than his. So so you're getting sex. I'm getting it, just so, not as much as I want it. And it's not, I think it's... Well, we're not, this it's show is not, a, let, let me, let me, I'm sorry about this, dear. This show is not about people who are getting it three times a day and they want it four times a day. This is about people who want it three times a day and they're getting it once a week or once a month or never. So I'm glad you're getting it, but it's not what we're talking about this hour, and I thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. This is oh my god, Dave on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi Tom. Hi. I've been up until about a year ago. I was dating the same girl for three years. I'm only twenty four years old, so I know it's against one of your rules there. And I just started listening to you about a year ago, and I found myself during lunchtime I'd sneak off to. Hooters, and I'd be hanging out with all the other losers there, sitting at the tables alone, and getting the false attention from the girls, and realized that I was just too, way too young to be doing such ridiculous stuff. So, actually, just about a a year ago, I broke up with her. We were living together. I told her I'm going to move out, and that was that. And uh, how did she react to that? Um. Actually, at first it was a little rough, but now we're still friends and we talk, and I'm getting more ass in a toilet seat. That's good. Now, are you done having girlfriends, Mr. 24-year-old? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not looking for that. I'm probably going to wait until I'm 35 to even think about it. I don't even know why you would need one then. Yeah, I just, I don't know, just probably because of the pressure from the parents and society, but I'm no. really in no rush. Don't take any pressure from me. I, I, I'm going to give you pressure to not have a relationship. That's yeah, probably the best advice I've had because, I don't know, just everything's so much better now. I'm living alone. I just bought a place. I have a place in Fullerton. And Remember, when you do what society says, society doesn't have to sit there with blue balls like you do. Yeah, it's true. So you need to do what works for you. Yeah, and it has been working. Things have been a lot better since I've been living alone, and I think uh, not being in a relationship is the best thing I've done. Maybe that's what you need to do. Yeah, I think I owe it to you, Tom. I think you do. Why you blow me up? I'll blow you up, baby. one 800 tom is our telephone number. It's Kelly. On the top like is show. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Doing okay. Tom, I've been married for seven years. We have a, uh, eight years. We have a seven-year-old little boy. Three days before he was born was the last time I had sex. Why do you tolerate that? I've grown to live that way. Yeah, but why? Because of Internet porn, I suppose. So you would rather just log on to websites than get a divorce? I'd rather get laid, honestly. Oh, well, why do you stay there? That's a hard question. I I I don't want my son to be uh, in a broken family. You don't want your son in a broken family, so you're going to stay there for another 11 years and not get laid? I suppose. And what is but your wife? What is your I mean, wife's? You have to know uh, what happened. My my wife went through the postpartum depression thing. Uh, she was um, she was diagnosed clinically depressed. Uh, uh, so she's been on Zoloft ever since. And um, and that means she can't have an orgasm. Well, she has no desire. More com comfortable taking it. Um, but we're, the the relationship has evolved to a point where we don't even look at each other in that way anymore. How think. many years have you been married? Eight years. Do you understand that if you're married ten years and then get a divorce, that you'll have to pay her alimony for the rest of your life? Yeah, I know that. 
So this is a time you have to do a gut check. Yeah. You really have to think about whether you want to be there for 15 years and then end up having to pay her forever. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Forever. Yeah, I'm hearing you. Forever. Um, but, and you know what, I'm one of those callers that uh, I know your advice is sage, but likely I'm just going to stick out, <laughs> probably. Yeah? Probably. And you're yeah. happy with that? Yeah. You're satisfied with that? Well, yeah, I, I won't say I'm satisfied with it. You know, if, if that's my bitter lot in life, then probably I just have to accept it. And I think I'm at a point now where I have. I would talk to an attorney before you make that decision. Well, my brother's an attorney, and he's, he's told me just about the same thing you have. That he has? Yep. And you're going to live with it? <laughs> Likely so, Tom. Sorry to hear it. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, I appreciate your show. I used to listen to you when uh, Evan Meekham was the governor here, and you were help, uh, help run him out of Dodge. But that, that's, 20, yeah, yep. that's, that's my life. And um, 20 years ago. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. Kelly, All right. thank you. Keep up the good work. Appreciate the call. Many on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? Oh. <laughs> How you doing today, Tom? Great. Great. Well, um, I want to know what I can do. Uh, I'm not getting anything. I want to get it from my husband. I just don't know how to make things work again. Well, uh, how did this start? I'm not even exactly sure. I've uh, been married about seven years. and Well, it didn't happen all of a sudden, did it? No, it didn't happen all of a sudden, but um, it's just progressively gotten worse. And why is that? Uh, well, he had a girlfriend for a while. Why was that? Who knows why men do that. Well, let me ask you a question, dear. How tall are you? I'm five four. How much do you weigh? 180. I think we have a clue. No, because the girl was bigger than me. No, we don't have a clue. That's not it. Were you always 180? Uh, no. So you let yourself go? Kind of, but, you know, um, I always get myself back on track. What do you mean? You, like I said, you, you mean like it. Oprah? <laughs> <laughs> No, not quite like Oprah. Well, why are you 180 pounds? That's unacceptable. Uh, I don't know. Well, if you want your best shot at getting his attention, you're going to have to look good. So you can't look good and be large? No. Don't believe what you read on Craigslist or those stupid magazines. Guys don't like fat chicks. And why was he with someone who was larger than me? Probably because he was married and, uh, you know, he needed to be with somebody who was, didn't mind hiding out or keeping it a secret. Hmm. I'm sure if he wasn't married, he'd have hotter chicks. Guys who are with fat chicks are with them because they can't get thinner chicks. Hmm. You sound surprised. Just disappointed. Hmm. Why? Because that just seems so petty. Dear, but and even when you had a boyfriend, were other guys interested in you too? Yes. Yeah. Why do you think that was? I look good, I guess. But you weighed I fifty pounds that's... less, yeah, and and guys like that. Why can't you accept reality? I don't know. It just seems like there should be more to it than that. There isn't. There's more to you, but there isn't more to it. That's how it is. You know, there are statistics, and it's not just me saying this. There are statistics that show that the more you weigh, 
the less educated a husband you could likely to get, the less uh, income he's likely to earn. These are facts. So just basically, if I were to lose weight, he'd be more interested. It's your best shot. By the way, it would be good for you to lose some weight. For your health. I can health. agree with that. I can so, agree with that. So why don't you do it? I've been trying to work at it, but you know, you no, try no. and work a job. Stop trying. a couple of little kids. Dear, <laughs> that has nothing to do with why you put so much food in your mouth. Why does going to the office mean you have to put more food in your mouth? It doesn't. It just means you end up eating junk food, not fast food. Why, why couldn't you bring an apple to work or a banana? I don't know. I, I guess I just feel that, you know, even though I'm large, I could still, and I'm not, like, super overweight. Darling, you are super overweight. At five foot four, your weight should not be above what one twenty. That means you are fifty percent above that. You're morbidly obese. Hmm. So visually, I'm not attractive anymore. No. And that doesn't mean nobody will find you attractive because there's plenty of guys out there with no education and no money who need a girl. Plenty of guys out there who can use a booty call when nobody's looking. But to be in a romantic relationship, nobody you would want to have would want to be with somebody who's 60 pounds overweight. All right, Tom. Why do you sound so disappointed? Are you surprised? I'm not surprised, just, just sad. You know, you work hard at other aspects of your life, and you think that the person that you'll be with will always want to be with you, no matter what. You must remember the physio <laughs> physiology of a man, okay? A man needs to be aroused in order to have sex. And looking at those sweaty rolls of fat when you take your clothes off is not arousing. Alrighty. I mean, do you think it is? Well, just be carrot sticks for a while, then. Do you think guys think that's appealing? I don't care about other guys, just my guy. Any guy. Do you think any guy finds that appealing? Well, not like as 101 listeners, but... Dear, the only guys who find that appealing are guys who can't afford any better. I'm amazed that you're surprised at this. Well, I figured my weight played into it, but I didn't think anyone would say that that would be like a primary reason. That's because I'm being honest with you. I'm not trying to sleep with you. I'm not trying to get anything from you. I don't stand a benefit in any way from you. I'm just telling you the truth. Because I'm not your friend and because I'm not trying to have sex with you, I, I have every reason to tell you the truth. Like they say, the truth hurts sometimes. Of course. Okay. All right. To the gym it'll be. Hang on a second. Stacy, what did you want to say to Minnie here? I wanted to tell Minnie that if she probably lost weight, she wouldn't care what her husband thought about her. She would probably be over him. All of a sudden her whole world would change. I mean she wouldn't she'd say, Oh, you don't want to
with me, fine. I'll see you later. I've got other better things to do. It's just that her self-esteem is probably so low from being overweight that she actually cares what this guy, you know, she's basing her self-esteem on him. Whole, a whole world would open up for her, Tom, if she lost weight. She uh, does, doesn't want to do that, clearly. I mean, now, now she feels like she has to do it, but she doesn't want to do it, because if she wanted to do it, she would have done it already. You would, I would think that that would be motivation enough. I mean, who cares about him? What about her? She obviously can't be feeling that good about herself either. If he doesn't even, you know, he doesn't even want to be with her. If she, That would probably solve a lot of her problems, work-wise, man-wise, health-wise. Everything would kind of come together, I would think. Something for her to think about, at least. I'll definitely be thinking about it. What? I'll definitely be thinking about it. All right. Stacy, Minnie, thank you. John Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. John Likas. 1-800-5800-866. I just wanted to call and tell you how much of a schmuck I think you are. You're the king of the schmuck. But I think it's great. I'm a schmuck, too. I'm the most entertaining schmuck in radio. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. There you are with that vacant stare. You're not getting any at home. Why'd you marry this person? Why'd you move in with this person? Why do you tolerate it? That's what I'd like to know. Vanessa on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi, I had a question for you. Yes. Me and my husband get in a lot of fights about, you know, how much we are having sex. And I think... It's a, it's a normal amount, but he always wants more. And when I'm not in the mood, he gives me those little puppy dog eyes. So, like, you know, how much does a guy actually want to have sex? I mean, is is not is every. Well, guy... how much are you saying is is normal, and how much are you saying is too much? Well, we, you know, we've been married almost two years, but we have like he, I want to say like three or four times a week. But he is like every night he wants to have sex. Well, first of all, how old is he? I'm 21. I said, how old is he? Oh, he's 22. At that age, people want sex every day. So then he's normal and I'm not, basically. Yes. I, I will tell you this. Certainly he's normal for a guy. Okay. And before he moved in with you or you moved in with him, uh-huh. the nights that you told him you weren't interested, he was getting it. So he's saying, nah, you know, we just had sex yesterday and I'm kind of tired. So I think we're going to go to bed early. We well, say, okay, fine. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. What do you think we do? Sit home drumming our fingers? <laughs> No, we call the next number on the list. Okay. That's what we do. So you all see, right. when you got him to commit, you were essentially were saying to him, "All right, now you have a, I have a monopoly. I'm the only one you can go to." <laughs> so understand his point of view. Now he right. needs to get everything he needs from you. Okay. You see. All righty. And he thought, that "Why did he want to get married?" Like so many of these other guys who call in here. And you have to get married to get laid all the time. Right. Not to not get laid. Makes sense. Right. (laughs) So I don't know why you got married so young or why he got married so young. It doesn't make any sense. I know. When I listen to you, it really doesn't. (laughs) I know. And you have a kid? And you have a kid also? No, we don't. I would recommend you hold off on that. (laughs) And you're laughing. If this issue is not resolved to everyone's satisfaction, you should not be having children with this guy. Right. You should just move on and let him find what he needs. Okay, well, let me ask you one more question. Sometimes, you know, I, I don't really, I could care less if we're having sex or not. So what would you suggest for me? Like, what could I do to, I don't know, get myself more excited about it or something? Well, um, I don't know how to get you more excited about him. I have no idea. But think of the alternative. If you don't start getting into him more, he will get it somewhere else. How will that be? Not so nice, I guess. (laughs) I mean, yeah, here's the thing. You can't fight about it. Right. You have to consider the alternative. 
you know, when you get married, just because there's a contract doesn't mean you've got him signed up for life. Yeah. If he's not happy, he will get his needs met. Let me give you an example. Do you make dinner for him? Yes. Let's say he came home one night and you both forgot to go to the supermarket. Would he eat dinner? Yeah. Yeah, if he's hungry, he's going to go out and get it somewhere else. Right, okay. That's how it works. Gotcha. So you go ahead and keep saying no, but that's what the result is going to be. He will go out to eat. Okay. <laughs> I, I would recommend the fighting stop today. If you don't agree with how much he needs sex, have the integrity and the balls to say, you know what, I'm not the girl for you, and leave. Okay. But if you keep doing what you're doing, you are heading down the road to him screwing other people. Okay. Do you want that? No, not necessarily. <laughs> not, what do you mean, not necessarily? Well, if he was to go, I mean, he'd go, but that's not the, part of the fact that I'm worried about now. I, I mean, of course I want it to work out, but... Well, you either learn how to give him what he needs or tell him you can't do it and get out. Okay. But stop fighting with him. Alrighty. I mean, his needs are his needs. I'm sure you have needs of other things. Needs for attention, needs for him to remember Valentine's Day, needs for whatever. Mm -hmm. That he fulfills for you. This is his need. Alrighty. And you either give it to him or tell him, yeah, you know what, I can't be in a relationship with you. Okay. Are you capable of doing one or the other? Yes, I think I am. Which do you think you're going to do? Well, you know, I just got to put out more, I guess. <laughs> you got to. Because there's women like you out there who think that they could get a guy married, then that's it. You're going to be the boss. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't think that. You're, you're like the toll booth. You're the gatekeeper. You're deciding how much sex he's going to get. Right. You've decided how much he needs, and that's that. Now you're calling me to verify that your decision about how much he needs is, is correct. Okay. That's not going to wash. Alrighty. All right, dear. All right, thank you. Appreciate the call. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Or hear our show live any day between 3 and 8 p.m. Pacific time by going to our website, blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.